post this to uh, YouTube and send you guys a link. So you'll be able to see this again and again. But I'm going to spend the next hour showing you all the features Zoom has to offer and give you some advice for what you should and should not use. Then I will go ahead and answer questions at the end that may not have been answered by Paula or Jonathan as we're going along um, or that we have come up at the end because you just want to know something as we finish up the session. I'm going to share a whole lot of screens with you. I'm going to share my screen a whole lot with you. And I'm going to start out by sharing with you the Clever Login page. And this is where you want to start if you're going to use Zoom uh, for your classes, whether it's you're going to use it for a lesson or you're going to use it to connect with your students online. All you got to do is click over here to uh, log in as a teacher school administrator. They've given you reminders here about how to log in on Active Directory. And again, your login is going to be your loss and number at hcps.net. Again, loss and number at hcps.net. So I'm going to log in. And I have to choose teacher because I have two logins being a district administrator. But this is from when I was at James last spring. So this is your uh, Clever dashboard. And on the Clever page, you have a lot of things you can look at. This is your favorite section. Things would only show up here if you favorited them. So for example, I was teaching part-time at James last spring and I was using Khan Academy, iReady, Common Lit, Typing Club with my students. I was using those things all the time with my kids. So I favorited them. Earlier this week, I favorited Zoom because I'm going to be using it. And actually, you guys are, uh, I've lost count, uh, probably number 20 of these webinars I've done this week. You're the fourth today, definitely. Uh, if you don't have anything in your favorites, that is okay. You can scroll to the bottom of the screen where you will find Zoom waiting for you in more apps. If you click on the little heart, it'll show up in your favorites at the top of the screen. Notice here, Brain Pop doesn't have that red heart because I've not made it a favorite yet. Scrolling back up, the other section on the Clever screen you want to be aware of is this new section, e-learning uh, for school closures. This is where your site, um, I'm sorry, your district uh, supervisors and supervisor staff and your content are putting out new information every day for you guys. And so these things change almost daily. I've gone into them and it changed from the day before. In fact, PK, uh, pre-K over here was on the right side yesterday. So they keep making updates here. So go back here on a regular basis. To get into Zoom, you just click on the Zoom link. And if you've already done this before, you know it takes you right to your Zoom dashboard. It logs you in automatically. No passwords, no nothing. You've already done it with Clever. Hence why that's the way we recommend you go in. If you've not done this yet, the first time you go in, you may get a strange message. It will say, do you want to merge your account with Troy Suarez? Or do you want to merge your account with HCPS? They've changed it recently. If you get that message, the answer is yes. What you're doing is Troy is our supervisor for instructional technology. He has set this up for us. He set it up so that we have the time limit lifted, which you can see right here in my green box. Time limit lifted for schools, and that's right now through the end of July. You can see here I still have a 100 person limit on my account, and that's all I can put in is 100 people at a time. Uh, you're saying, but wait, Scott, you told me there's 160 some odd people in here. That's right. I'm using my Florida Southern account. I've been using Zoom for many years, and Florida Southern gave me an account that has a higher limit on things so I can use it for the teaching I do with them. There are three things you want to refer to on this page, just three things that are really important. You can explore around all you want, but number one is going to be the meetings tab. So I'm going to click on the meetings tab and it's going to show you I've got a whole lot of meetings set up for Sunday. I'm going to have a very busy day on Sunday if I don't delete some of these meetings. But to get a new meeting, all you do is click on schedule new meeting. You give your meeting a title, My Fake Meeting 10, and you guys can laugh at me all you want because, well, I've been doing this all day, every day for the last six days. In fact, I eat, sleep, drink, and um, dream about Zoom. I had a dream Zoom last night, and luckily, it was a dream and not a nightmare, so things didn't go wrong in my dream Zoom, so hopefully, they'll go right for us today, and we'll have no glitches. All right, you can click the date here where you want yours to be, so I'm going to make mine on Sunday the 29th. I'm going to make it for uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm going to make it for two hours. Now, of these three features, the only one that really matters is the date. The date tells you what day that meeting happens. Even though I set this for 10 o'clock on uh, Sunday, I can go in at 945. I can start it early if I want to. So these two here are kind of like calendar features. Like, it won't cut you off at two hours. It's not going to cut you off at two hours. So... That's important to have it for your calendar, but that's about it. Time zone. We're all in Eastern. Don't change it. 
Uh, recurring meeting. This is not important to me because every one of my meetings are different. I've had four trainings so far today. We have two more this evening. And so I use a different link for every one, obviously. But let's say that you want to have a standing meeting from 1 to 2 p.m. every day for your students as a help hour, like office hours. They can come in and ask for random help. You would click on this button and it would give you the opportunity to schedule it every day, every Tuesday, however you want to schedule it. If you want to have your math time elementary teachers at 9 o'clock in the morning, you do this. Uh, high school, middle school, you want to have first period at 930, you do this. Um, the reason behind the recurring meeting is you get one meeting link. One link works for the chat every time you pull it up. So it's not like with me, today I sent out four different links for the daytime ones and two for the nighttime ones. That's six different links I had to generate. If this is the case, the kids would use the same link every day to come back in with me. Meeting ID, I leave it as generate automatically. And uh, the reason behind that is you don't want to use the same meeting ID every time. We have already seen stories of other states, other districts, where hackers are now going in and trying to get into these Zoom meetings and they're sharing inappropriate content with students. So let it generate automatically so it'll give you a unique number. And I would also require the meeting password. Uh, I'll show you more about that in just a minute, but this means there's gonna be a password. Now, if you use the link I sent you, you didn't need the password. But if you gave just the meeting ID to somebody, they would need a password to get in. I'll explain in a moment why that's important. Video, by default, it has video as off and off. For you guys, I turned it on because I wanted to see your smiling faces. However, if I were doing this with students, uh, the district's recommendation is to have this turned off. I understand most of you are, are gonna wanna connect with your kids and have the video on. I understand that. What we're telling folks right now is do not record when your students are on. Do not record when your students are on. There's also a feature in settings where you can disable students from recording, and I'll show you that when we get that far. Audio, I leave this as both. Both because some people might call into my chat with their telephone. They may not have internet. They may have unreliable internet. They may have power gone out, whatever it is, but they can call in either way. Enable join before host. No, never, no, nope, don't check this one, don't do that. What this allows is for students to come into the session before you're there. Now, when I came on at 2.45, there were about five of you in the wait room already waiting for me. If I checked this box, you could have come in and had a conversation together. That's not a good idea. Mute participants on entry. I do this one all the time, and that's why when you guys came in, you were muted already. So if you're gonna have 24 kids or 25 kids or whatever it is, come in, um, you would mute them upon entry and that way their microphones are muted automatically. Enable waiting room, there's some discussion about this and whether or not you can talk to each other in the waiting room. I have not found it yet. We've played around with it everywhere we know. But again, it's a district recommendation saying to turn off the waiting room because kids can discuss and talk about things in there ahead of time. So whereas, um, oh, hang on one second, Paula's sending me a message. Paula, you have your microphone on? Um, I think so. Yep, you do. Okay, so I figured it out and people are confused. It's they're not using the waiting room and the kids are going in before the instructor. And so therefore they are left unattended and they're getting themselves into trouble. That's gotcha. the problem. That's enabled join before host. Correct. So we already said, no, don't do this one. Thank you. That's great, Paula. I'm glad we found that one. Um, so again, don't do this one. This one, talk to your principal, but I'll get back with my colleagues on this and we'll have that conversation. But I know you guys were sitting with a blank screen in front of you and then you saw a couple messages from me that popped up before you came in. That's the waiting room. I don't use the next one, this authenticated users. We'll talk about the one scenario where breakout room might fit you. And then we'll talk about recording too, because obviously we don't want to record. So if you check this box with your students on, it's going to record automatically. If you're doing a blank lesson just with Zoom open and you're just doing it with no audience, then by the way, click record, it'll record it automatically. And we'll come back to that feature right at the end. I'm gonna click save and when I do, it's going to take me into my summary page. This is my summary page of my fake meeting number 10. You can see here's my calendar information, here's that meeting ID, here's the required password. So what those hackers are doing is they're going onto the Zoom app they're typing in random codes like this. It's only nine digits. They're likely to get one. And when they do, they go in the meeting and they go and they share inappropriate content. 
So if you require the password, that's one more thing they have to put in to get into your meeting. So I would definitely do the require meeting password. Um, the link will still work and doesn't require a password, but somebody trying to punch in this code uh, would need the password to get in. Here is that link with the password in, in, embedded. And by the way, that's what PWD means, password. The password is embedded. You can get the invitation link right here by clicking on copy the invitation. It brings up this handy dandy invitation. You can copy it, you can paste it into uh, your Edsby dashboard, you can send it via Remind, you can send it via email. Now, about this invitation, it's very long. Um, you see this part from dial by your location all the way down? You don't really need that part. You need this part at the top with the two phone numbers for one tap mobile and all the information up here, and that's what you wanna copy and send to your students. So when you copy and paste this, you can delete this part at the bottom, you don't need it. Notice at the bottom, I've got my meeting summary information. If something is wrong, I can click on edit this meeting, and then I can uh, go back and change it. I can also start the meeting right here. I can also start the meeting right here, okay? When I go back to my meetings, you see now, whoa, Scott's Sunday is really busy. But from this page, I can go ahead and go back into that meeting and edit it. I can start that meeting. I can delete that meeting. So that's the meeting tab. Next is the settings tab. Now in here, there's a lot of features you want to look at. I've left this one as default just so you can see it. So again, if you wanted to make sure your video was always on, you'd click this button right here for host video. Um, I would not do the participant one. I only do it when you feel it's appropriate and you've talked with your principal. Here's that audio one. Again, leave it alone. Here's join before host. Again, that should be off. We don't want to do that. We don't want to let them join before we do. Um, here's the password piece to require the password. And so you've got that piece in there. Um, mute participants on entry. You can do that one where you can mute them when they come in automatically and have it here. Then there's information here about the chat feature. Now, if you don't want the chat feature at all because you think your students might type something inappropriate, you can turn it off right here in your settings before you even schedule a meeting. You can also turn off private chat, which is very, very important. Make sure this setting is off private chat. This allows students to chat with each other and you can't see it. Bad, bad idea, okay? You've got some other settings here you can play around with, such as a co-host. Um, those of you who are a co-teacher, uh, meaning you're working with an ESC colleague or a gen ed colleague, um, you can turn this on and invite them as a co-host. They would then get the same controls I'm about to show you. Otherwise, like Jonathan and Paula today, they are just participants in my session, just like you guys, and I've turned their mics on, but I've turned you guys off, okay? Screen sharing. This is very important. By default, your setting will say this. Participants can share and only the host can interrupt. Because we have seen already twice this week students sharing inappropriate content, you wanna come in here and click on host only and save. When you do that, every meeting you set up after that point, so the one I go set up later today, will have the um, host only section and not the participant one. I'm gonna put it back only because I'm doing this training again later. I wanna make sure it's that way, all right? So then you've got other features here like annotation and whiteboard. Um, this is so students can write on the screen. I'll show you that feature today. If you didn't want them to have that access, you can turn it off right here. Same thing with the whiteboard piece. You can do that here as well. Then you've got the breakout room piece. Now, the only place I would use a breakout room is the aforementioned I have a co-teacher. So we are two adults and I'm gonna split us up. So um, uh, Elena McQuay, you're my co-teacher because you're the first name I could see on my list over here. And um, you are going to take the five ESC students in our combined class and go in one breakout room. I'm going to take the 25 other students and go in a different breakout room. There's always an adult with them. That's the only way I would use this feature. I would not use it to have kids unmonitored. But I am going to show it to you because later you'll see how unmonitored you guys are. So that's an important thing. There's some other information down here about virtual backgrounds, um, about sounds, about joining, email notifications, other stuff. But one thing you definitely want to consider doing is clicking on this recording tab. The recording tab. And notice it says here, um, local recording. You can do that for you. That's you personally. Automatic recording is there. Um, but you can actually you know, look at the settings for that. And you see this one right here? Host can give participants to record locally. I'm gonna uncheck that one and save it. 
I don't want them to be able to record it either. Okay, so that's in the recording tab under settings. I can uncheck that box and now the only one who can record is me. If I didn't want to mess up, I could even turn this off and then I wouldn't be able to record it all. The last thing I want to show you on the website is up here at the top under resources, download Zoom client. Resources, download Zoom client. Now you're saying, Scott, what is a client and why do I need it and why do I want it? You all are familiar with our email accounts, Ideas First Class, right? You've been using it for a while. Some of you still log into Ideas email using a web browser, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari. You can do that. You can check your email, send email, check calendars, all that. But you'll notice on the website, you can't go into PDS and other functions. You have to download the first class program called a client, and you have to use it to get the full features like PDS. The same thing is true for Zoom. You can run Zoom from a web browser, like I'm in Safari because I use a Mac, okay? You might be in Google Chrome. But you don't get all the full features of it if you don't download the Zoom client. So the features I know that are not on the website, I'll show you when we get to that point, but you definitely want to download the Zoom client. If you're on an iPhone, iPad, Android phone, Android tablet, the Play Store and the, iPad, uh, the App Store both have a Zoom client you can download for free as well. And you definitely want to use that client on those devices. Now, as far as hosting chats, hosting chats, I recommend you host from your uh, computer and not from mobile device. The reason behind that is computers offer the full featured um, Zoom app. They also offer uh, true multitasking. So for example, I'm clicking out of this window right now and going and checking something else just to show you I can do it. My face didn't stop moving. I kept talking to you. I hosted several Zoom chats on my iPad when I was out of town one time with my students at Florida Southern College. The first time I left the Zoom window to find an, art, uh, an article or something, my face got stuck like this until I came back in. The second time I got stuck like this. So unless you want to get stuck in some weird pose, I later learned to do this before I left the window, definitely use the client on the computer. It makes it much easier to work with. All right. Now I've got you back in my main window and we're not sharing anything. You guys are seeing one of two things right now. You're either seeing me really huge and you in a small box, or you're seeing something that looks like the Brady Bunch. So for me, I have a Brady Bunch view. So Stacy A, you are Alice the maid. Paula, Paula is going to be um, Mrs. Brady and Harmony Stewart, I'm sorry, you are Mr. Brady. And everybody else, you are the Brady kids. I have the Brady Bunch view called the gallery view. So I'm going to share some screenshots with you that can kind of show you how those things work and how they go. So this is the view some of you may have. Sorry, if, I couldn't hear what you uh, My watch decided to answer that question for me. That was funny. Technology at its greatest. So here's Jonathan, my son, and here's me in a goofy pose. But this is the speaker view. Speaker view. This means you have the speaker very large and everybody else very small. This is one example of the gallery view. Notice uh, Carrie and I, only two of us in there, we were side by side. And here's the window I was just referring to now, my Brady Bunch. So I like this view a whole lot better. If you're looking at the speaker view right now, uh, up in the top right-hand corner, you've got a little button here that says gallery view. If you're on a mobile device, you have something that looks like a waffle or a nine square. Click on that, it'll take you to the gallery view and it's much more pleasing on the eyes. The reason I don't like this view is, especially when you have student voices turned on or participant voices turned on, every time someone else speaks, they get the floor and they become the big window. So I did this the first time with my students, not in gallery view, and I was going boom, 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 changing pictures every time somebody talked. And it really drove me nuts, it was like psychedelic. Before we go on with the app itself and the menus, I'm gonna come back up here to your Edsby dashboard or grade book. And this is Paula, she shared with me because I don't have access anymore. When you copy that link, when you copy the link from the Zoom website, this is the best place to paste it, right here. And then this is the feed. You go ahead and pick what class it's going to and hit share. So if I'm setting up a meeting only for first period regular, I would send just that link. If I'm doing a uh, recording that I'm posting that I set up ahead of time of me doing a lesson and I want every regular class to get it, I click all my regular classes and I would click share. That way it'll show up on their dashboard. I can also over here email it to them, and if any parents have gone on there, I can email parents as well. I'm talking mainly to you primary teachers, 
who uh, your parents may want to be on there the first couple times and they don't want to be on the same device their kid is on. They want to watch what's going on and not actually be standing next to their kid. So that would be that feature right there. So that's Edsby. We'll come back to it again a little bit later. What I'm going to do now is come back to my view. This is what I see. And again, I am the host. So mine looks different from yours. I'm going to go over each of these menus briefly. Then I will take you through each menu in detail and show you what it does and all the settings. So first up over here on the left, we have the mute button and the stop video button. These are for your settings, your device settings. So your computer, your tablet, your phone. It's to stop and start your audio, start and stop your video, change settings, things like that. That's these two here. It does not affect participants. The invite tab. Let's say I started my meeting and I forgot to invite somebody. I could actually invite them here and then that would happen. Uh, I would invite them here and they would be able to join that link. All right. Next, manage participants. Hang on one second. I am getting uh, updates here right now on Zoom live. Okay, here we go. I finally got the answer I wanted and I've been waiting for this all day. Um, video should be set to on for the host and can be set on for participants, meaning you can now turn it on for your students and have them on with you. So that's number one. Uh, we already talked about audio being on telephone and computer. Uh, screen sharing host only, we already talked about that. Um, mute participants we talked about already. And recording should only be of the teacher. You should not record students. So that's the latest and greatest update. And let me just thank them for that. And I knew that piece would come up. So there we go. I wanted to stop and share that with you guys. Okay. Can you say it one more time? Sure. So uh, video is on for you, definitely. Video on for you, the teacher. Video can be on for participants if you want to see their faces. I know it's great for connecting. Audio we talked about is both computer and telephone. Screen sharing host only, we've already gone over that piece and I'll go over it again. Um, muting participants on entry, already talked about that one too. And finally, uh, if you're gonna record, it should be of you only, do not record the students. And I'll come back to that again when I talk about the recording feature right at the end. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, so I was on the manage participants tab right here, manage participants. This is where you can manage everything about folks. Your button says manage, it says participants only. Mine says manage participants. Over here on the right, this is an example of the manage participants window. Now notice in here, the red line means their microphone is muted. I've muted them automatically. The red line here means the camera's turned off. I've given them the right to turn it on and off. And so I can enable that feature right now and let them turn their camera on or off, whatever they wanna do. This little circle here means I am currently recording. So that's an important thing to know I'm currently recording. Also, let's say I forgot to mute you guys when you came in. Right down here, mute all. I could mute you all at the same time. Or I could unmute you all at the same time. And that would open all microphones or close all microphones. But remember, you may have kids come in late, and so therefore you definitely don't wanna have, um, definitely don't wanna have them, uh, I'm sorry, I went out of that window, unmuted to come and interrupt your class. The next feature is the share screen. We'll spend some time on that in a moment. We'll also talk about the chat feature. Uh, we'll talk about the pause stop recording feature at the end. Again, you only want to use recording when there's no students on. We'll come back to the breakout room feature. If you did not enable this on the website, it will not appear. Remember, I only recommend that you should use this uh, for your um, co-teacher. If you have a co-teacher, don't use this by yourself and put kids in a breakout room by themselves. Bad idea. Reactions are kind of like emojis. You can do a thumbs up or a clap. So if a kid got an answer right, everybody could clap and things like that. And then finally, the end meeting button is over here on the right. All right. Moving on. They are blowing up my phone now, guys. I apologize. We're going to go on each menu individually. Now, of course, I'm on a Mac. You might be on a Windows machine. So I've used both Windows and Mac screenshots, hence why I look a little bit different. So this is a example of the Windows version. 
of the, uh, the up uh, button next to mute, the up arrow next to mute. When you click on this, these are the settings you get. I'm looking at the videos of you guys right now. Some of you have a headset with a microphone on it. If you've chosen to do that, you may have to come in here and tell it to select your, um, your microphone from your headset as opposed to your internal microphone. Same for your headphones versus your speaker. You can also test your speaker and microphone here. So those are some important features to know. And again, this is only about your computer, your device. This is the same screen, I'm sorry, it's a different screen. This is the one on uh, Mac for video. Mac for video. And so um, notice here, I clicked the up arrow next to stop video. And I have three options. I have FaceTime HD camera, that's the, the camera on my computer. I have virtual background, I'll show you guys in a minute. And I have video settings. This is only again about my camera. Down here, this is the Windows version of the same exact thing. The only difference is the color that it is. Sorry, I've got it uh, not centered. There we go. So notice the color is a little bit different and they're in a little bit different order. So that's a really important thing for us to know as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the main screen and I'm gonna change my virtual background for you so you can see how that piece works. Let's see, um, I'm feeling like I want some football. So I'm gonna go into Florida Field at, in Gainesville. So there I am, it's empty. Well, it is empty right now. So I'm really in there by myself. Yeah, I know. Some of you give me the chop. Sorry. No, we won this year. You didn't. <laughs> we got our rights this year. But anyway, a couple things to know about the virtual background. First of all, you have to be using a computer that can handle it. Some of you, your computer may not be able to handle it, and it will tell you that. This is also one of those features you have to have uh, the app enabled. You have to use the Zoom app for this. You can't do it on the website. It won't work. And you've got to download the latest version of the Zoom app. When I first started doing these and playing around with this for our chats, I didn't have everything ready for it and I had the older client. So I had to go download the newer client and do that. When you do choose to do a virtual background, be careful of two things. Number one, make sure the clothing you are wearing does not blend too much into the background. On Monday, this poor lady became a floating head because her shirt matched the background. It took out her body and her head was going and bobbing around on the screen. Scarier and creepier was Wednesday. This poor lady's facial tone matched the wall behind her. Zoom took her out of it. I saw her hair and her shirt. Okay, that's pretty creepy, a headless being, right? We don't want to do that. You can see, if you see Jonathan right now, he's blending into his background as well. His is not working right either. So again, make sure you try this thing uh, before you do it with the kids on there because you don't want to show up in weird places. I like the virtual background, why? Because I'm sitting in the same room, Paul can tell you, I've been in the same office for six days now, doing Zoom chat after Zoom chat after Zoom chat. Um, and it gets you know, mundane to look at the same four walls, so I change up my background in every single piece. Again, if you wanna know how to get to that, I'm gonna share my screen again with you. It's right here under stop video, click the up arrow and go to choose virtual background. When you do that, you will get a window looking something like this. And depending upon your version of the software, it may look different. But sometimes it comes loaded with preloaded backgrounds. You can use this plus sign right here to add any picture. The two things about adding pictures are, number one, it must be saved on your computer. It must be saved on your computer to load it. Number two, it must be a landscape picture. So those of you who are Disney fans like me, I was at the Magic Kingdom uh, back in September and I was there for early magic hours and I got a picture of the castle and the partner statue with almost nobody in it. Like you never get that except for like right now when there really is nobody in it. And so I tried that picture on here and because it's a portrait picture, it turned the castle on its side. And so it looks really, really weird. But again, that's how you get in there. Uh, it's on the settings, uh, video settings. We're gonna keep moving along because we uh, ran behind because of our extra information. But now I'm gonna take you to the Manage Participants tab. Manage Participants tab. When I click on Manage Participants, I'm gonna get this window over here. Notice you guys were in the waiting room, in the waiting room, and there were two of us in the meeting. Barb's camera was turned off, I was recording. Now, again, the waiting room there, I'm still being told to not use the waiting room, but I've yet to find the feature they're talking about. And we'll have a discussion about that piece. And if changes happen, I'll let you guys know, like you did with the video, because I've been telling people no video for three days now. Um, but here, right here, I could message you guys in the waiting room. I could also admit all of you at the same time. I could also mute you all at the same time. 
and I can unmute you all at the same time. So if you've got a group of 25 or 27 kiddos with you, you can mute them all at the same time and unmute them at the same time, and that's a really neat feature. When I blow this menu up a little bit more for you, again, same menu, but I've clicked on this more button. So what you're gonna find is a lot of your in chat sessions, while your Zoom chat's going on, you have this more button or you have a three dot button. So when I click on more, I get the option to mute participants on entry. I've done that for you guys, okay? Allow participants to unmute themselves. I have turned that feature off because this would allow you guys to turn your mics on and off whenever you want. And being that there's like 150 of you in this chat, that could be really bad, all right? If you have a small enough group, you can do it. Like my class last night at HCC, we did this chat and I turned it on for them because there's only 13 of them. But I would probably keep it off for my students. Play enter exit chime. That's gonna play a doorbell ring every time somebody goes in or goes out. I'm hearing dings in the background of my text from my team. It's driving me nuts, I gotta turn it off. My phone is not sitting next to me right now. Allow participants to rename themselves. I would uncheck this for your students. I don't know about you, but I taught fifth through ninth grade and I had one or more students who would name themselves Doofus or some other inappropriate name. So you wanna uncheck this so they can't rename themselves, but I'll show you that feature in just a moment. Lock meeting. If you click this, it means no one else can join. That's a good thing if you're worried about people joining late or random people joining your chat. But in the case of this, if somebody got kicked out of your meeting, they wouldn't be able to come back in unless you turned it off. Finally, put participants in waiting room. That's that last feature here. When I admitted you guys, I turned this feature off. I clicked here and turned it off. Here are those same meetings again, or the same windows again in Windows. And again, you same options, just it's a more option. You have those various options there to do. All right, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna give you a chance to rename yourself. So if you're on a computer, you can hover yourself, your, your mouse over your picture and click on the three dots in the upper right-hand corner and go to rename. Now, Mr. Frank Bueller, I'm gonna take care of you already because I see you in my screen. So I'm gonna name him Mr. Bueller and there we go, he's now Mr. Bueller. You definitely wanna do this for you because you probably don't want your first name on there for your students. But if you've done the feature I just talked about of not allowing, that was in manage participants, not allowing participants to rename themselves, you can rename anybody else you want to. For example, Susan Edison, I'm gonna rename you. Are you Miss or Mrs? Mrs, okay, got it. So there you go, your rename is Mrs. Edison now. So again, you can rename anybody because I have the same three dot thing you guys have. I have the same three dot thing again you guys have in the upper right hand corner and I can go to rename and rename anybody. By the way, I can also mute and unmute you guys there. I can also stop your video and start your video. I can also kick you out of the chat if I want to because you're not behaving or you're a random person that came in. So neat feature there. The next thing I want you guys to do is in the bottom of your screen if you're on a computer or the top of your screen under more if you're on a tablet or a phone, click on the participants button and in there you'll find raise hand. Click on that and you're gonna raise your own blue virtual hand. And whoa, you guys figured it out very, very quickly. Fantastic, you blew up my screen, awesome. So Mrs. Edison, I'm gonna lower your hand now and unmute you. Hi Mrs. Edison, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good, glad to have you here. All right, Mr. Bueller, I raised, lowered your hand. Hi Mr. Bueller. Hey Scott. Long gonna, time no see, Frank. Where's the, uh, where's, oh. You found it, there you go, all right. Uh, Mrs. Bellamy, I'm gonna uh, lower your hand, unmute you. Hi, Mrs. Bellamy, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? Good, good, glad to have you here. So this is a really neat feature for you if you're gonna have like 20 to 25 students max, they're all in one screen, you can see their hand raised and you can call on them. So when you have a question, they can raise their virtual hand and they can go do that. What it looks like for me, what it looks like for me is this. I see a little hand in the upper right-hand corner of your picture. When I hover over it, I click on lower hand. I also have a mute unmute button for you, and I also have a three dot button right here where I can rename you and stop your video and all that good stuff. So definitely a useful feature for you guys um, if you want to be able to um, have your students participate in a chat. And now that you have their faces on, that's even better. All right, moving on, speaking of chat, to the chat feature. So this is the chat window empty with nobody in it. And then this is the chat feature uh, blown up a little bit. And so what I want you to see in here is right now Sam Weiss and I were privately chatting. 
I'm the host, he's a participant. Mrs. Hickey and Mary were chatting with everyone. So in this menu over here, again, I said either more or three dots, this one's three dots. You have four options for your participants. You can turn off their chat feature entirely, that's no one. You can make it so they can only message you the host, which Sam is doing here. You can do everyone publicly, which is what Mary and Mrs. Hickey are doing here. Do not, do not do everyone publicly and privately. This is where students can message each other individually and you can't monitor it. This one here is the one I recommend everyone publicly because then they can send things publicly and you get to see everything. You get a copy of this chat, you can copy and paste it to their parents if they're inappropriate or to your assistant principal or principal and do that kind of piece there as well. So again, everyone publicly is a setting you wanna have here. And again, here is that same thing in a Windows version. And again, the only difference um, is the colors and the order of the menu. So again, same thing here that we're looking at. Let's move on now to the share feature. Something I think will excite most of you is one of the best features of this program and this tool. Um, everybody has a green share screen button. It's either in the bottom of your window or if you're on a mobile device, it's in the top somewhere, maybe under more. When I click the share button on Windows, I get a menu that pops up like this. And notice on my Windows desktop, I could share my entire screen. I could share a virtual whiteboard, which we'll do in just a moment. I can share my iPhone or iPad or Elmo if it was connected. And I can share Google Chrome by an open window. Here's my Mac version of the same thing. Now notice I have a whole lot more windows open on my Mac than I do on my Windows machine. And these are the things I could share with students live. A PowerPoint, a Word document, a PDF document. I've even seen people do videos. I've seen folks do um, uh, Excel spreadsheets. And so the key on this is number one, have it ready ahead of time. Number two, have it open ahead of time. So for example, this series of screenshots here you guys are looking at, um, I went ahead and put these together and I have it open before I even start the chat. The clever window we were in earlier, the Zoom window we were in earlier, I had those open ahead of time. So I'm not fumbling around looking for the next thing I wanna talk about with you guys. I had it all set up, ready to go. Now there are settings for sharing that you wanna be aware of, just like with the video piece. So here's that share screen button again. This is the up arrow and it gives you three options. Now by default, it shows up this way. What you're gonna do though, is you're gonna click on advanced sharing options. Advanced sharing options. When you do, you get this window. And notice I have changed mine like I just recommended to you to host only. This means participants will not be able to share. Only you can as the leader of the group, as the host. So that's a very important piece to make sure you can share only host and it's not on participants, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna play around with the virtual whiteboard so you can see the power of that. When we get in that window, you're gonna see at the top of your screen a green box saying you are viewing Scott Richmond's screen. Now I did this one when I was viewing Paula Richmond's. Next to that, you're gonna see a view options button. When you click on it, you will see annotate, and then you will be able to write on my virtual whiteboard with me. So I can show you that I can text things on here. I can write in text a problem. I can draw the answer to my problem. I can put in stamps. I can put in a check mark. I like this over here, good job. I can do many things. And so the virtual whiteboard is really neat. Now, there's only one bad thing about the virtual whiteboard. And that is the fact that I have no idea who's doing what. Unless you find that lucky little arrow that shows your name, I will not know who's doing what. Jonathan Richmond, thank you. And counselor, thank you. Otherwise, I don't know who's doing what. But oops, I closed it by accident. Did I lose everything? Nope, as long as I haven't cleared it out and haven't closed the chat, it's still there waiting for me. So I've got that piece right here ready to go. And I'm gonna erase this roll tie because I don't like that at all. All right, no, I'm just kidding guys. But I can save it. I can save the whiteboard. I can also clear it any time and let you guys start over. So while you're playing a few minutes more and getting a few minutes to do this, let me talk about the real powerful use of this annotate tool and this sharing feature. Elementary folks, third, fourth, and fifth, fifth, third, fourth, and fifth specifically, you were getting ready for your writing assessment right before the break, right? You were getting ready for that and you're so depressed now you don't get to do it. I understand that fact. But 
let's say you still want to practice uh, teaching students how to text mark. How to text mark, uh, we got an Amber Alert going on, I see. Um, how to text mark something uh, such as a opinion piece. So you take that article, you share it as a PDF, okay? What you then do is you show the students, I'm gonna underline this boys and girls and put a check plus next to it because that's something that supports the opinion. I'm gonna underline this and put a check minus next to it because that doesn't support the opinion. Okay, now Mrs. Edison, would you do paragraph two? Mrs. Bueller, would you do paragraph three? Mrs. Bellamy, would you do paragraph four? And I can have students work on them individually. What it's gonna take though, ladies and gentlemen, is teaching procedures again. You're going back to day one, basically. You're teaching kids procedures about how we're gonna to cooperate together in an online platform. Math teachers, you can take a PDF of six, eight problems up there. You can write students' name next to each problem and they can solve them in real time and you can work together on things. Social studies science uh, reading teachers, you can put a reading sample up there and read together and highlight and underline. Some of you like this purple here have found there's a highlighter feature as well. So a lot of things you can do. Um, art teachers, history teachers, you might be showing documents that you want kids to write on. Same kind of thing, you can share those features together as a group. So again, you definitely wanna make sure that you have participant sharing turned off. If not, I'm gonna turn it back on for a moment and I'm sure my son will be the first to jump in and share his screen, he always is. Unless somebody beats him to it, yep, there he went. If for some reason you forgot, you can shut them down like I just did. You have control over that to stop their sharing piece. I'm gonna turn sharing off for now and um, not let you share anymore, but you see the power of this particular piece. And again, to get to the virtual whiteboard, um, you're gonna click on your computer on sharing, share screen, and then click on the whiteboard. This is how it looks on Windows. This is how it looks on Mac if you're in dark mode like I am, no big deal, okay? And then again, your participants will have the option to annotate if you have not disabled that feature by clicking on view options and going to annotate. The last feature I wanna share with you is the feature of breakout rooms. And I'm sharing it with you so you have an awareness piece and you don't make a mistake. You don't make a mistake. If you decide to use this feature, you need to make sure that number one, you have another adult to be in the shared room because I'm gonna split you guys up in a moment just to show you that nobody monitors it. I can't see what's going on in there. If you have a co-teacher and you guys wanna use this feature to do smaller groups, you would click on manually and the program lets you assign people automatically. For example, I can assign Mr. Bueller into uh, one classroom with five students and I can be in the other chat room with the other 25 students. And that way he can focus on their needs and I can focus on the bigger group's needs. When you do it automatically, you have no idea where people are going, which by the way, is what I'm gonna do with you guys. So I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms now. When you get there, and this is why you wanna have an adult in the room, you're gonna realize that you can automatically unmute your own microphone. You can unmute yourself, even though I've locked it out in here. Number two, you get sharing rights back. So you definitely wanna have another adult in that room if you're gonna do anything like this. So I'm gonna put you in there now, just so you can see it, and here you go. <clears throat> this is exciting. We're doing something different. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you guys? Hello. Hello. I'm leaving you now. Hi. Okay. Not a good idea. No. Hi, breakout room two. Or actually three, your breakout room three. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Well, I just see this feature. I'll be back. <laughs> hey, Nesbitt. Hi, breakout room five. Hey. Hi. 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 All right, guys. See, I can pop in any one, but I can only see the one I'm in. Mm-hmm. No. Oh, breakout room 10. Yeah. This is oh, Here we are. I'm going to bring you guys back now. Okay. 
All right, looks like everybody is back with us. And again, uh, you can see how dangerous that feature could be if you put students in a room by themselves. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, so you need to be aware of this feature so you don't accidentally hit it and stick kids in a room by themselves. By the way, the window I see is this once you guys are in the breakout room. This is what I see. So this is who was in breakout room three when I took the screenshot. And I can leave that room and go into breakout room one. I can go into breakout room five. I can close all rooms at the same time. Just so you know, my camera, when I am recording, only saw what breakout rooms I was in. I also only saw the breakout rooms I went into. So those who I didn't visit, I have no idea what you were doing. Nobody was monitoring you. So this could be a dangerous feature if you decide to use it. I would only use it again if you have a co-teacher that's gonna monitor the other room with you, and therefore you'd have two rooms and not five, six, like we had 12 rooms. The last thing I wanna talk about is recording. And based on the new information we just received, you may wanna pre-record lessons for your students and then have an open office hours. So let's say you wanna go and do a lesson for all your social studies classes. Frank, are you still doing civics? Yeah, so Frank does civics. Uh, Frank used to train for me years ago. That's how I know Frank so well. Um, and um, Frank's doing civics lessons. All his classes are doing the same content. So he's gonna record that lesson once. So here's what Frank might do. He's gonna set up a meeting for Saturday at 8 p.m., okay? He's gonna set it up on the website. And then he's gonna go launch that meeting and not invite anybody. He's not gonna invite anybody. He's not gonna bring anybody in. It's gonna be him and a blank screen. It's gonna be him. He's gonna do his thing. Hey, uh, Mr. Bueller, how are you guys? Good to see ya. Here's what we're doing today. Here's our learning targets. Here's this, here's that. Here's the content. This is a sheet I wanna share with you, blah, 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 blah. When he's done, when he ends his chat, Zoom will automatically save the recording. Zoom will save the recording once he's done, and it saves it in a folder called Documents Zoom, and it does it by date. So he'll find a file called Zoom MP4. Now, if you're not a video file, MP4 is just a simple word for a universal video file. Frank can then take that MP4, he can upload it to a professional YouTube channel and share the link with his students. He can upload it to Edsby. He can upload it to uh, Office 365 in his OneDrive and share the link with students. They can then go in at their pleasure and watch Mr. Bueller's lesson. He can then set up office hours. So for first, second, and third period, I'm gonna be available at this time. Here's your link. For third, fourth, and fifth period, I'll be available this time, here's your link. And he's gonna send all that information to them right here in the Edsby screen under the feed, and that way each class knows it. So what he might do is paste the link here for the, Ed the video of himself and click every class. And then if he wants office hours for only That's first and second, file. he'd do it for that one. What was that, Paula? You can attach it as a file. So you've got all the way to the left, you've got the camera. The second thing is your file. Yep, you can also attach it here in Edsby too if you want to. Um, that's entirely up to you how you do those things. You can also email it down here, a link at least. You can't email the file. It won't let you do that. But you can attach yeah, it in Edsby. Attach, and you can attach the file. If he's if you pre-recorded the MP, the MP4, mm -hmm. he had the meeting by himself, Right. you would attach it right there, the second thing. Right, yep, right here. That's, mm -hmm. that's how I'm planning to do my lessons. Yep. So definitely an option for you there if you want to do that. And you can post it to all your classes at one time. You can then come back in here with the separate link for the chat when you're gonna have them on, but you're not gonna record them, all right? I'm gonna exit out of my share and bring you guys back together again as one. I'm gonna stop my recording. I'm gonna give